What's going on, everybody? Here we see a dusted tank is not a tank full of dust. So I think I've said this before, but um, I've been seeing some stuff lately, and I don't think it's my job to correct every single wrong that's on the internet. But I figure, hey, you know, maybe maybe there's some people out there who might want to try something different. So as you can see right here, um, I am just spackling this model's leg with some of that Mr. Color pastel. It's probably one of the worst uh, purchases I've ever made. They do a lot of stuff pretty well, but I'm not in love with their pastels. You can see that particular color is Cheeto flavored or whatever. And it just, <laughs> it looks like uh, dehydrated nacho cheese. <laughs> when you put it onto the model. So um, I prefer maybe something a bit more neutral, a less less uh, cheesy. Anyhow, I, I'm, I realized kind of after the fact that I, uh, by putting this in here, I might give people the wrong idea, but this is basically the not how to do portion or how I would not do it. And what you see there is you see the after effect, which is the legs completely covered. There's not a lot of subtlety and there's just, the dust is everywhere. So, you know, again, maybe that's what somebody wants to do and maybe that's actually a realistic portrayal, but you know, all those caveats aside, I don't think that that's particularly interesting to look at. So anyhow, here I am doing the, uh, the cheesiness. I'm just taking mineral spirit because I didn't apply any fixer over it. So basically this is like if you did this and you dusted up your model with a bunch of pigment and maybe you were not happy with it, you could always take it off as long as you didn't fix it on. So this is the result after, I, well, that was quick. After you remove all of the pigment, uh, it, it was still, there was still some a little bit left, but anyhow. So what I'm doing here is I'm, this is actually, this is some of the stuff I've been using lately. The pigments in there are VMS and this is one of their products, which is called Alkyd Binders. You pretty much make like a, a ghetto oil paint or ghetto Alkyd paint and, um, you spackle it onto the model. So these particular pigments, again, I'm a cheapskate. So there's like a little bit left in there and these are, are actually like a textured version. It's really complicated. Their entire system or the guy, I think it's one guy, but who knows? He might have more people, but he's, he's pretty smart when it comes to this kind of stuff. I think he might've been a chemist or something, but a lot of the naming conventions around the products are confusing. Anyhow, this particular product is uh, it's got like a little bit of texture a little bit of grit in it so you'll see when in, uh, i dry it that um, some of the grit remains and that's actually i mean i know that there's other products on the market that uh, have that kind of thing like a, a nihilac oxide is that right no which is the whatever the one is that has the grit in it i think it's the maybe the nurgle rot or something and uh, also Vallejo makes a couple of those but anyhow you see I added a teeny bit more pigment in there because it was just it wasn't quite enough and using this stuff you'll kind of if you if you buy any of their line which I'm not this is an advertisement but I bought a bunch of their stuff because I watched his videos uh, on YouTube which I'll link to and I was like wow I'm I'd really want to try it out because it's like a whole different way of looking at things I just think that the naming conventions and some of the it's, it's pretty much not for people who just want to buy a bottle of something and put it on the model. Anyhow, so I added some more pigments and I'm mixing it up with a little bit more fixer and I'm going to put it onto the model. If I can, there I go. Okay, there we go. So I got it into the frame and yeah, like I said, this stuff, uh, you have to be, it, it's, it, there's a little bit of a learning curve, not really in the application, more like in the, it, well, yes, in the application because their pigments seem to be just like incredibly intense and that's a good and a bad thing because I guess it's like you get more of a value, but sometimes you want to blend pigments a little bit and you don't necessarily want the intensity. This particular stuff, I, I have uh, like six of those bottles of Mr. Color Pastel and I wanted to alter the color because I, I have one color in Mr. Pastel that I don't have in, in any of my other pigments, which is kind of like an off-white. So I wanted to lighten one of the pigments slightly. And I just dumped a whole chunk, maybe a teaspoon to a tablespoon inside of the other pigments. I might be exaggerating. Point is that the VMS pigments just swallowed the Mr. Pastel pigments whole. 
uh, so they're they're super intense. And even this uh, with the grid in it is supposed to be slightly lighter, slightly less tinting, and it is a little bit. But you have to you have to be very cautious when you first start mixing these pastes up and putting them on your model. Anyhow, what I've done is I mixed the alkyd and putting it on the model. And there's other resins out there, but this this particular stuff that he's made has really nice uh, properties as far as matte and cleanup and that kind of thing. So once the paste is applied, you use the hair, hair dryer, you dry it off and that's all I'm doing here. And it'll, it should dry pretty matte. One of the things about alkyds is that inherently they're super glossy. So if you don't necessarily add enough or it just leaches out a little bit on the edges, you'll see a little bit of the gloss, like a little residual gloss sometimes. So just, uh, you can clean it up with mineral spirit. So here I'm just spinning it around. I have it on high heat um, and I'm drying it off. I think he recommends, you know, high heat, high, high air, but I, I, my particular hair dryer is ultra loud. So I don't really like having it next to my ear, you know, just like full blast. And eventually I think, oh yeah, he just popped off. I think, I'm not sure if in this clip, Maybe in one of these clips, like the, the whole backpack comes off, which I thought I had cemented it, but I guess not. I, I put some Mr. Cement Deluxe over the paint, and usually the the cement will eat through the paint, and this is plastic, but in this case it didn't. I don't know why. So here's a close-up. You can see the grit. Uh, you can see the texture, and actually, I mean, this is, like I said, the grit is for a 135th scale model. This particular model, I think Warhammer is like, you know, a 154th. So it's not too far apart and really the grit doesn't seem that bad. Um, it doesn't seem like too uh, large or out of scale. And um, yeah, I think it looks fine. But wait, there's more. So I'm gonna you know, zoom back out and then I'm gonna start cleaning it up. And again, this is a, now you'll notice a brush is a little bit more damp than I would do if you ever watched any of the other videos. I flattered myself that there are people who are actually coming back to watch these. Um, the, there's a bit more thinner in the brush. And so I'm cleaning up with uh, just a little bit more thinner. And really, I mean, you could go in with a dryer brush. It'll just take longer because when you apply heat to the alkyds, they seem to really stick. So the whole the whole benefit of using this particular product, in case you're just like, what's an alkyd? Why am I doing this? I would recommend watching the guy's videos, but in a nutshell, these things, uh, they're kind of like an oil-based product. You can clean them up with uh, mineral spirit. And um, you have like a, you have a window, you have the same kind of 24 hour window to apply the uh, paint and, and clean it up. And then after that, it, it's gonna be, I don't know, um, it actually, it starts to dry a little bit sooner than that. So you won't necessarily have that full time, but I think he advertises it, it advertises it as a nine hour window in which you have to clean up. And then of course, after the fact, you could always add product. And, um, so if we go with less rather than more, you know, sometimes we have, you know, you can always layer it up. Uh, it really depends. I mean, if, if you apply something and you're like, that looks great, then so be it. If you want, like on this one, this kind of just, it was sort of an idea I had out of the blue. I know everybody is uh, maybe at home right now and uh, it's been a while, so I thought I might do something. So anyhow, here I am kind of just cleaning out the main areas, uh, pushing it into the recesses. And what this particular type of pigment with the with the grid in it what it does is when it gets kind of stuck into corners and stuff it kind of like clumps up like dirt clods in in the corners and i'll try to point that out when the video is over with but here i am just going around cleaning it up doing my thing getting a brush in there moving it around oh yeah that's good stuff okay more of the same um you know i just while i'm cleaning all this stuff up i'll just take a minute it's been uh, it's been a long time and a lot has happened and I'm sure everybody has a ton going on. So, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, I, very rarely do I feel the urge to do anything anymore. When I initially started making videos, it was mostly because um, there were some people who needed help on Reddit and I kind of made a couple of videos and people seemed to like them. So then I made a couple more and then, uh, well, 
one thing led to another and then I ended up getting a different job and I just like everything went out the out the window so it's been a while anyhow um, finishing up um, I think I'm gonna <clears throat> hopefully get to the point where I point some stuff out Just moving it around, keeping it off the main surfaces. And like I said, if you wanted to keep it on the, uh, if you wanted to keep a little bit more dirt, that'd be fine. But this is kind of like, this is, I would say, a supplemental activity to using uh, with other weathering products. It really depends. Like normally this is kind of for the groundwork on a tank or the bottom. Like if you were going to do, uh, you know, mud and those kinds of effects on the, along the running gear or close to the bottom of a tank. So that's why you want this kind of heavy application on a model. Maybe you want a little bit less, but actually I think this is well suited to the purpose. Um, but you just have to be very sparing with it, even more so than other stuff, just because of how intense the pigments are. And until you get used to mixing it, you'll mix a bunch of paste, or at least this is, I'm just speaking about myself. I mixed a ton of paste, wiped it all over the model. And then it's like, you can't get rid of it. It doesn't matter what you do. You move it around. You're just, you're still having this film and it, it never quite leaves the model. This is actually working pretty well. And the only thing I can think of is, is that I had so little pigment that it's kind of cleaning up a lot better. That's probably the only reason. So there's my little guy. And this chapter is no chapter in particular. I just kind of like the way the color looks, to be honest. And I was like, I really want to see what sepia colored paint looks like over white. <laughs> that was the whole impetus behind this project. Okay, so I'm, oh, I'm drying it off again. I'm using the hairdryer, just, uh, you know, evaporating all the thinner and getting into the nooks and the crannies. And I think there's, still, there's actually still a little bit more cleanup to do, but I sort of wanted to get to the point because this video is already pushing the 10 minute mark. It doesn't seem like I can do techniques in a short amount of time. So you can see a little bit of that residual orange Cheeto dust, but like, like I said later on, I can go back in those crevices with some oil paint and that won't be a problem. I just really, I don't know, I felt a powerful, felt a powerful, powerful motivation. Okay, so here we are, I'm pointing out, you can see there's a teeny weeny little clump of dirt right there. There's another clump of dirt right there. And those are those little, uh, balls of grit that kind of wad up when you use this particular product, which are, it's really cool. And it's very unique to this uh, system, which is the VMS system, if you ever check it out. So anyhow, that looks pretty good. Uh, thanks for stopping by and um, maybe I'll do another one of these again. Talk to you guys later.